Today is the try-in of the entire arrangement or the completed arrangement of teeth including both anteriors and posteriors into the dentures. And there are several things that we want to do today. First of all, we want to verify from our patient that the relationship of their mandible to their maxilla is identical to the relationship of the mandibular cast to the maxillary cast as we have it on the articulator. Looking at it the other way, that the relationship of this mandibular cast to the maxillary cast is identical to the relationship of the mandible to the maxilla on our patient when that patient is in centric relation and at the correct vertical dimension of occlusion. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to try the trial dentures into our patient's mouth and we're going to verify three things from it with our patient. First of all, we want to look at vertical relation, how far it is from the chin to the, to the maxilla or chin to the nose, so to speak. How far, what is that distance when he's in occlusion? Is it a good distance that provides him with a, a good vertical dimension of occlusion? And at that vertical dimension of occlusion, does it provide a good freeway space? Uh, is he uninhibited from uh, motion of the mandible as he speaks and chews? And we also want to provide, want to verify the relationship of his mandible to his maxilla at that vertical relation when he is in centric relation. Once we've done that, we're going to take a look at aesthetics and see one last time if this is the aesthetics that we want to develop for our patient. So we're going to try these in the mouth. So we just remove them from the cast on the articulator. And we're going to try them in the mouth now. They usually are a bit loose at this point. That's not a real great concern to us at this point, as long as they're not so loose that we can't get some idea as to what uh, the relationships are. I want you to close on my fingers now, Mr. Poor, real hard. You're not going to hurt me. I just want to make sure that you, that they're seated well without hurting you. That's fine. Now open. I want you to curl the tip of your tongue as far back as it will go and close until your teeth just touch each other. And at this point, we should have an even contact without anything bouncing. Okay. Now open. Close again, open, close, very good. And we have all of the teeth are meeting. This is going to be difficult to see, I know, but just about like that. Open now. Open real wide, that's it. With him, his head cocked like that, it makes it difficult. Now hmm. close on your back teeth, on all of them at once. Open and close a couple of times. Okay, we're not going to be able to see that on there, okay? But I think you can see on this one side, that close, please, that they hit evenly, okay? Now, relax. I know, it's, I know it feels loose to you at this point. Why don't you just clamp your teeth together to make sure they're seated real, real well. Now, we would like to look and see if the vertical dimension of occlusion is correct and if we have a good freeway space between the teeth as we check the vertical dimension of occlusion. We do that with some phonetic exercises. First of all, I'd like you to say 444. 444. Okay. Now, just say some chicken. Some chicken. Mm -hmm. Say church. Church. Judge. Judge. Okay, let's try Emma, Emma, Emma. Emma, Emma, Emma. Mm -hmm. Can you see on that now that it does create a little space as he is goes through the M sounds, you can see a space between the maxillary and the mandibular anterior teeth. Say, Emma, Emma, Emma. Emma, Emma, Emma. See the space that is there. And then we can have him go through some sib sibilant sounds with the double S's, the CH and J sounds involved with them and see if as that chin bounces up and down that the lower teeth approach the upper teeth but do not actually bump them. All right, let's try church and judge. Church and judge. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now let's try 666. 666. 777. 777. Okay. And we see with that that the lower teeth approach the upper teeth without actually bumping them. 
Okay, at this point what we have is we have proved to ourselves that the vertical dimension of occlusion is a good vertical dimension of occlusion for our patient. It provides a freeway space which appears to be adequate. We can see when we look in the patient's mouth that the centric relation uh, record that we recorded for him, that that seems to be accurate and that as we have the patient close in centric relation at this point, all of the teeth meet evenly. Um, once we've done this, our next judgments that we want to make are those of aesthetics. And we, this is our last try at seeing if the aesthetics that we've developed into this set of dentures are good. First things that I look at is first of all, I would like to look at, the, at this maxillary lip and I would like to see if the amount of the vermilion portion of that maxillary lip if that appears to be a normal amount, would you expect for a patient of this age to see this amount of the red part of his lip exposed? That appears to be within a normal range as far as I'm concerned of the amount of the red part of the lip that shows. Now he's been wearing a set of dentures that has in them the teeth set back or the teeth have drifted back over the years uh, more uh, lay, uh, lingually than we would like them. And this is a normal tendency of dentures as they shift over the years, they shift up and back. And as that happens, if you wear those dentures very long with those teeth shifted up and back, you'll begin to see in the lips some vertical lines. You do not eliminate those lines with a set of dentures. If you do, it will look very false. It'll look like it's stretched. But basically what we look for is the normal drape of that lip. Does that appear to be a normal drape of the lip or does it appear to be one that is stretched or appear to be one that has collapsed? All right, now let's try a couple of other phonetic things that we would like to look at. You can tell a great deal about the incisal length of the maxillary anterior teeth and the buccolingual positioning of the maxillary anterior teeth by having your patient go through some phonetic exercises which include a lot of F and V sounds. And there are certain words that you can have your patient pronounce for you and if they don't do it too deliberately and do it in just an easy flowing method, you can get an idea if the position of the maxillary anterior teeth is in a normal physiologic position. The theory of this is that if the teeth are in a normal physiologic position, the incisal edges of the maxillary anterior teeth will contact the lower lip on what I call the wet dry line or the junction of the mucosa with the external skin that you will find on the lip. Okay, now open a bit Mr. Poor, and you'll see there is a line on the lip that is wet from that line inward and is dry from that line outward. And if we have the teeth in about the right position, as he pronounces words with the F and V sounds, the incisal edges of those maxillary teeth will contact that lower lip in a fairly firm fashion without distorting it. And it'll be right about that line or the junction between the wet surface and the dry surface on the lip. Now, let's try that and see what happens. Say fan. 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 All right, say fan and van. Fan and van. All right, 44. 44. Mm -hmm. Does that show up on that? pretty well now and you can see the incisal edges touch the lower lip at approximately the wet dry line. Let's try that again. 444 and 555. 444 and 555. Okay. That appears to be in a good normal physiologic position. Okay. I would like you now to just sit like this and raise your upper lip till I can see the upper teeth a bit. Just raise the upper lip. Raise it up above the teeth. There we go. And as he's doing that, what I want to do is I want to see if the midline is approximately in the midline of his face and it appears to be so. Okay, that part now is about all that you can tell that if you really would like with the patient in the chair. And at this point, what I would like to do is to put our patient in front of a mirror at a normal speaking distance so that he can observe and see if the directions that we're going with aesthetics is one that, is, that he thinks is pleasing. Because after all, if he doesn't like them, you're in trouble.
Okay. Now, when you have the patient evaluate the dentures for aesthetics in a mirror, you don't want to allow them to get up real close to the mirror because they don't really get a true picture of what's going on. You would like them at what we call normal speaking distance, which would mean you would like them somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four feet from the mirror. Now what I want you to do, Mr. Poor, is I want you to wet your lips to the tip of your tongue and say 444. 444. Say 555. 555. Uh -huh. Let's try some chicken. Some chicken. Church. Church. Judge. Judge. Very good. Now say Emma, Emma, Emma. Emma, Emma, Emma. Very good. Okay. Now what I need from you is to tell me if what you're seeing in here is something that you would expect to be, is it something pleasing that you're seeing with the dentures or is it a surprise to you to the point that it's something that, hey, this is a big change. I have to think about this a while because if that's what you have, then we certainly want to make sure that they're exactly where we want them before we process the dentures. Once we process them, we can't change them very easily. But right now, if you don't like what you see, we can change them, okay? So you have to tell me what you think I now. I think it looks real good. Uh, close to natural. Uh -huh. Okay. What I like about what I see is a couple of things that I would like to point out. I want you to clamp your teeth together for me now, Mr. Poor. And now let's raise your lip a little bit. And I would like to point out that the two central incisors are hanging a little bit long, longer than are the lateral incisors. Now let's have you say again 444, 444. 555. 555 and you can see built into the incisal edges if we can see the biting edges built into it is a curvature mm -hmm. we call that a smile line and it looks very good on Mr. Poor. at this point it may be slightly excessive with the central incisors hanging just a tad longer than perhaps we might like them in the finished product I do this on purpose and the reason why is the teeth as they are, as they're new, as they came from the manufacturer like this, the biting edges of those teeth are quite rounded if you look at them. Now clamp your teeth and let's raise and you can see that the biting edges and all of the corners on these teeth are quite rounded. For someone Mr. Poor's age and even a lot younger than Mr. Poor with natural teeth, those edges would have flattened off in a wear pattern at this point. They would be much straighter. And so what I like to do is at insertion time, if I leave them just slightly long at this point, at insertion time, we will grind on those a little bit to straighten them out and make them look as though they have worn just a little bit, okay? Is there anything that you see that you do not like about them? Because right now is the time to tell us, okay? Okay, well, that's fine. Oh yes, because they're loose at this point, and uh, uh, at, and we expect that because they're they're not processed yet. These are just hand formed. Okay, so they're not processed and they're sort of loose. Okay, that's fine. Okay, at this point, I think we have agreement that the teeth are where we, about where we want them, and with perhaps just a little bit of uh, just a little bit of um, alteration of the biting edges of those teeth uh, at insertion time, we can get those to the point that that's what we want for aesthetics. And then all that means is right now they're just slightly long and we're uh, at the time that we actually insert them, we'll grind on those edges just a little bit to flatten them off. So we're ready at this point to take those trial dentures from you now and we will do what, go through what we call festooning, which is carving the pink parts of it, a pattern for the pink parts of it, process the dentures, and the next time we see you is when you're going to wear the dentures home. Okay? All right.